Hello everyone. Let's start our second day of AAA practice to pass session. I hope you all remember that in the previous class, we had a discussion on some basic advices relating to AAA. And then we had a discussion on September, December 2021 exam paper. In that exam paper, we were doing question number one and uh, we completed two parts of the question. I hope you all remember, we started with a briefing note, we wrote an introduction. Part A, we didn't attempt, we left it that we'll do at the end of this question because it was not a routine part. And then we did audit risk part. I taught you people a brief discussion about audit risk, writing technique, mark allocation, and what we can include in the audit risk. I hope you all remember. Then we discussed all the audit risk. We drafted it along in the class. We used analytical procedures. We discussed different accounting issues, impact, and everything. Then we moved towards one more part that was relating to audit procedures. That was part C. Before doing that part, we wrote a basic idea that what audit procedures are and how we get marking for it. Today we are moving forward. We will try and complete this question and we will do one more question in today's session. I hope that you people are understanding the exam technique, how you have to deal with the complete exam paper, how you have to draft and develop the answer. As we started in the previous session, we will continue the same approach today also. Okay, now. Today we are moving towards the part D of the question, which is an easy one, the ethical issue requirement. I told you people in the previous class that while attempting the questions in the exam, it is very important that you attempt those parts first, which are routine parts, the parts in which you have a better grip, a better knowledge rather than attempting the non-routine part or attempting the abnormal requirements at the start, go for easy one so that you can have a confidence booster, you can save your time and everything goes normal towards the end of the paper. Okay, now today we are starting with part D of this question, which is using the information in exhibit five, discuss the ethical issues raised and recommend the actions to be taken by our firm. Now, when we talk about ethical issues, that how we have to develop the issue of ethical matters, okay? So for ethical issues, what I advise to my students is, listen to me, when we talk about ethical issues, what you need to understand is that you can use code of ethics and independence issues in ethical matters. Now, what do you mean by code of ethics? You can use integrity, objectivity, competence in due care, professional behavior, confidentiality, the five points of code of ethics, and you can use the threats of independence also. When you are writing ethical issues, you can use code of ethics, you can use independence issues. You can also use general professional issues, like if there is any matter which creates a general issue of lack of professionalism. You can use code of ethics, you can use threats to audit or independence, you can use safeguards and actions to be taken. Okay, now one mark for each threat, you will get one mark for each threat action or any other issue for any one mark now this is very important what you need to understand is that don't write too much in every point the maximum you will get is one mark so don't get involved in too much detail okay the maximum you will be getting will be a one mark for each point one mark for every point you are developing okay now in AAA exam, the examiner expects that students evaluate the issues. Like if I make a comparison of ethical matters in AA and in AAA, AA is F8, Audit and Assurance, and AAA is Advanced Audit and Assurance, P7. If I compare the examiner's answering approach, 
What I will see a difference is that in AAA exam, please listen to me. In AAA exam, the examiner wants the student to evaluate the issue. Now, what do you mean by evaluating the issue? Listen to me, please have some patience and listen. Like, for example, if you are saying that auditor is providing non-audit services, so it is a self-review threat. Now you have to evaluate the issues. You have to develop the evaluating points. Like you will look that what is the value of non-audit services. You will look that whether management is supervising that non-audit service or not. You will look that whether the non-audit service involves clerical work or it involves subjective assumption based work. What I'm trying to say is that in AAA exam, the examiner wants you to evaluate the issues. Like I'll give you one more example. For example, if audit team member has taken a loan, please listen to me. If audit team member has taken a loan from the client, then it's a self-interest, right? We all know that. But you need to evaluate. Like we will look that what is the amount of the loan. We will look that what are the terms of the loan, whether they are normal or abnormal. We will look that what is the position of that audit team member in the firm. So what you need to understand, what you need to evaluate is that in AAA, what the examiner wants is that while you are developing the ethical issues, you should have an ability to evaluate. You should have an ability to evaluate. Rather than just identifying the issues, rather than just identifying their impact, the examiner wants that you should develop small, small points on evaluating the issue. Now, I have developed a very good handout for my students in which I give them a list of evaluations. If you'll give me a minute, I will open that handout on the screen. I will share it with you people, okay? I will share that handout with you people uh, after the session on the WhatsApp group. And I'd also, I'll put the link of the documents on the comment section of the videos. Okay, so give me a minute. I'm stopping the, uh, the pausing the screen sharing and I'm uh, opening my document so that I can show you people. That will be very helpful so that you people can have a list, a variety of evaluation points. Okay. Now, just give me a second. Just give me a second. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is the handout. I have opened it on the screen. Okay. Now in this handout, what I have done is that I have given some learning points, some evaluation points. Like, for example, if I discuss a situation of the loan, which I referred to you people, like, and this will be very helpful for you people while you are dealing with the exam answer. Um, for loan, loan taken by audit team member, which I discussed with you. So if you get a situation if an, in which an audit team member has taken a loan, so these explanation points will be very useful for you people. Please confirm me. Can you people see my screen? I shared it. Can you people see it? Okay. Now, now see, if the audit team member has taken a loan, you can use these points. That if audit team member has taken a loan from client entity, then it creates a self-interest threat. Now, this is the basic point in which you identify the threat. And then you will give the evaluations. 
Now, what are the valuations? However, it needs to be considered that if loan is taken at normal market terms, then it will not create a significant threat. Position of audit team member who has taken the loan also needs to be considered. Audit team member may be asked to repay the loan. Okay, another option may be to rotate him from the audit work of the client. Terms of the loan taken by the audit team member should be reviewed. Okay, I will share this document at the end of the session on WhatsApp group. Those who are not on the WhatsApp group, you people can message me after the class on my WhatsApp number. I will add you in the group. So don't worry about it and stop writing this. That sir, please share the document. Please share the document. Okay, so I will share on the group and I will put the link of Google Drive folder on the comment section of those who will listen to the recording and those who are on my those who are my existing students. They already have the access to it on the learning management system. So just listen to what I am teaching currently. Okay, so what I am trying to say is that whenever you will get an ethical issue. You people need to develop. You people need to develop a list of evaluation points. In triple A examination, please listen to me. In triple A examination, it is very important that when you look at an ethical issue, you should not be just identifying the issue. You should be using an approach of evaluating the matters. Like we discussed this issue of loan taken by audit team member. If we pick up any other issue, like if there is any gift and hospitality, like if the client is giving any gift or there is a situation like that, for every point you will get one mark. For every evaluation, for every point you will get one mark. Okay? So the approach is very simple. The examiner says that don't just identify the points. The examiner says that don't just identify the points for every point for every evaluation one mark for each threat action or any other issue one mark for every evaluation and every for every evaluation just a second for every evaluation action etc Okay, so when I use this word that you people have to give an evaluation, what I mean to say is that you have to discuss that how this issue can increase or decrease. Yes, one mark for every evaluation point, like if you like write three or four evaluation points, you can get three or four marks. So what the approach should be that at the start, you will identify the threat one mark and then you will write multiple evaluation points. One mark for the threat or issue when you identified and then multiple evaluation points. Then you will write few actions. Okay. Like, for example, if there is a situation of gift and hospitality, you can write that if client is providing gifts and other favors, then it may create self interest threat. Then we will consider that whether the gifts are of nominal value or they are of any big value. You will consider that what is the event of the gift, whether it was gift, gifted in a normal situation or whether there was some abnormal circumstance. Like, for example, if there is a birthday and someone gives you a small pen or something like that, then there is not an issue. Ethical training may be required of audit team members who accepted the gift. Then you can write that, however, it needs to be considered that some level of gifts is normal in the industry. We can never be too much strict. Okay, audit firm should establish internal procedures for its employees that while accepting the gift, they should take the approval. Now, this document is a life saving document. What I have done, I identified many issues and I have developed a list of evaluation points on them. Okay, and gift. From my side, I will give you this handout and you people can use it while answering your questions. OK. Now let's come at the question and let's look at the question that what he is asking in the question. OK, and we will solve the question using this handout. Now discuss the ethical issues and recommend the actions to be taken by our firm. So we are looking at exhibit five i want you all to concentrate on it 
Now, a meeting took place yesterday in which the audit engagement partner discussed the potential sale of Martin Gruber share with the company directors. The company directors revealed that Willis Company is the company with whom negotiations have started in relation to sale of Martin Gruber shares. Willis Company is an existing audit client of McLean and Company. The directors have requested that McLean and Company assist them with the sale by performing assist them with the sale by performing a vendor's due diligence service in which they would conduct an independent review of Gruber company financial position and future prospects and produce a report on their findings to be provided to Willis company. Now this is the situation if I will give you a brief review, if you people listen to me carefully. We are the auditors. We are McLean and Company. Okay. We are the current auditors of Gruber Company. We are McLean and Company, the audit firm. We are currently the auditor of Gruber Company. Okay. The Gruber Company's chief executive officer and majority shareholder. Martin Gruber is selling a 60% share to Willis Company. Now, Willis Company is also our audit client. Now, what Gruber Company wants from us is that we provide, prepare a due diligence report. We prepare a due diligence report. Okay, the directors have requested that McLean and company assist them with the sale by performing a vendor's due diligence service in which they would conduct an independent review of Gruber company financial position. Now, there will be a very big conflict of interest. What you need to understand is if we will write that Gruber company is not a good company. So obviously, Gruber company will say that what you are doing. We have been giving you so much business. Why are you writing things like that? So there will be a conflict of interest. Similarly, we are we will be preparing the report. On behalf of Gruber company, but this report will go to one of our client, which is Willis company. So this will be a situation of conflict of interest. This will be a situation of advocacy. Okay. And we cannot enter in any such situation. How can we become the valuer? How can we become an advisor? Now the question is that, sir, do we have any such? Listen to me. Do we have any such situation in the handout which you have given? Yes, there is uh, one issue in relation to it, which I have covered. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I hope it is here. Just a second. Um, just a second. It was here. Less intrusive general integrity issues. No. Now there can be a uh, client. Just a second, I must close this window of the camera. Now, the first issue which is covered in my handout is non-audit service issue, business partnering, dealing with two client, family member, client not agreeing, client acceptance, resignation of the bank loan negotiation, threat of client deadline issue, low balling, gift and hospitality, less inclusive, general integrity issues, previous year modified opinion, objectivity concerns, advertisement, offshoring, okay, cross-selling fees, long association, referral fees, okay. Now see, in this handout particularly, we don't have this issue covered in which we are giving advisory uh, to our client. Um, but you can find a similar, you can find a similar issue uh, 
uh, when you will look at it here, in which we can say that we are dealing with two clients of similar industry, because uh, you can say that uh, uh, we will be providing service to, uh, to Martin Gruber for valuation. We will be providing service on valuation to Martin Gruber and that report will go to Willis company. So you can use the points of conflict of interest. Now you can get similar points. You can get similar points from here dealing with two clients of same industry. That can be some helpful. OK, so uh, but if I talk about this situation specifically in this situation, you can cover the point of conflict of interest. You can cover the point of confidentiality, that there will be issues of confidentiality. You can argue that we will become advocate. We will become advocate, advocate of whom? We will become advocate of Martin Gruber. We will become advocate of Gruber company. And since we'll be writing the report on their behalf to Willis company, and then you can discuss several actions in which you can take, you can use separate teams. You can give a disclosure situation that, okay, there will be a disclosure. We will tell them that we are involved in such services. Okay, so now, so if we are dealing with two clients of same service, what we need to understand is that if providing services to two clients of same industry, then there can be issues of confidentiality. There can be issues of conflict of interest. Why there can be issues of conflict of interest? Because both clients will require that we help them with their interest. Okay, then you can refer that it is normal that such services are provided. We deal with multiple clients of same industry. Now, this specific heading will not fit into your situation. But what I tell to my students is that whenever you will read this handout, you will have a good grip on this handout. This handout will help you in developing and improving your understanding and your ability to evaluate this. This handout will help you in developing a positive impact that how you have to think and how you have to develop the evaluating points rather than just identifying the issues and rather than just pinpointing the matters that, okay, this will happen or this will happen. Okay, because in AAA exam, what the examiner wants from students is that students should be evaluating the issue rather than just putting them out. Okay, now if you look at the requirement that how many marks he is giving us, he is giving us eight marks here. He is giving us eight marks in this point. Okay, now if we go back and we start developing the points. Now, what you need to understand is that you will get one mark for each of the points. Now, when you are getting one mark for each of the points, what you need to make sure is that you should not be writing in too much detail. You should be writing small, small points. Now, listen to it. If McLean and Company, or you can write if our firm will provide due diligence report services, to Gruber company for Martin Gruber shares, then it will create issue of conflict of interest. Why it will create issue of conflict of interest? Just a second. Then it will create issue of conflict of interest as this report will be used by one of our existing audit client, Willis Company, if I'm not wrong, by Willis Company. Okay, will be used by one of our existing audit client, Willis Company. Gruber Company, Gruber Company might expect or use its influence on our firm to prepare a favorable report to prepare a favorable report so that shares are sold at a higher value okay so first of all it can create a situation of conflict of interest 
first of all it can create a situation of conflict of interest why it will create a situation of conflict of interest because gruber company can require that okay you are our client we are paying you a good amount then why are you not giving a favorable report you should be giving a favorable report to the list company now second issues of confidentiality may also arise as willis company who is the potential buyer who is the potential buyer in this transaction may require our firm to give some insight of gruber company considering that we are that we are existing auditors of willis company and gruber company both now both of them will be expecting that now obviously gruber company will be expecting that we'll give a favorable report and willis company will be expecting that we will give them some internal confidential information so issue of confidentiality also arises willis company use potential buyer in this transaction may require our firm to give some insight of gruber company considering that we are existing auditors of Willis Company and Gruber Company both. If, if our firm will use its position as auditor to provide any additional information relating to Gruber Company to Willis Company, then it may create situation of confidentiality breach now so the first the first issue the first issue in this regard was the conflict of interest please listen to me first of all you identify the issues the first issue in this regard was of conflict of interest the first issue in this regard was conflict of interest the second issue in this regard was confidentiality are you getting it now now you will highlight some actions which you can take what actions you should be taking our firm should give a disclosure to both to both entities before accepting any such engagement further a confidentiality further a confidentiality agreement should be signed that no client will require any confidential information from us okay now first of all what we said is that this will create an issue of conflict of interest then we said that okay this will create issue of confidentiality also now we should give a disclosure to both of the entities what else we can use we can use a separate team for every issue and for every action you will get one mark for every evaluation you will get one mark so for ethics learn the approach which i am using develop small small paragraphs okay i have given you this list of points this list of points include so many issues this list of points include so many issues now, obviously, this do not include all the issues, but it includes majority of the issues which can come in the exam. When you will read these issues, when you will read these responses, you will learn the ability to evaluate. Okay. Now, you can now this can happen in the exam that the situation of the exam is not exactly covered in the handout. Obviously, I am not saying that this handout is whole and soul. But what can happen, what can be useful in the exam is that you can get a few, few points from different headings to develop your answer and it will help you to develop the evaluations. Okay, so first we identified the issue which is of conflict of interest, then we identified matter of confidentiality, then we wrote an action. Okay, are you people getting it? This handout 
is not for revision of ethics. This handout will give you a list of points which you can use while developing your answer. See what I'm trying to say is that when in an exam a student gets an eight marks situation, the students get stuck, they, they, their mind do not work, that how to write eight points. This handout can give you different evaluating points and different identification points and different actions. Even what you can do is that while you are doing the past papers, you can add few more points also. Okay, now, so first we identify the issue of conflict of interest, then we identify the issue of confidentiality. We said that we should give a disclosure. What else we can use? Separate teams can be used, can be used for auditing services and for valuation services. What you can do is that you can use separate teams. Now, what do you mean by using separate teams? What does this mean? The one team which is doing auditing will be separate and the team which will be doing the valuation services will be separate. Now, this can help in resolving the confidentiality issue. Why this can help in resolving the confidentiality issue? Because because when you will use separate teams, they will not have access to the data. Okay. Now, one student has asked, sir, if we write three issues and five safeguards, will we get eight marks? Yes, you will get eight marks. If you will look at the marking scheme which the examiner provides, you will understand the approach that what examiner wants is a one one mark point. He do not want that you write four actions and four issues. No, you can write eight actions. You can write eight issues. You can write four actions, four issues, three actions, two evaluations. You can use whatever mix you want. Okay, now separate teams can be used for auditing services and for valuation services so that confidentiality issue is resolved. Team which will be doing valuation services which will be doing valuation services, just a second, which will be doing valuation services should not have access to audit data so that no confidential information is breached. Further audit, further both team members can also be asked to sign a confidentiality document. Now we get the confidentiality document signed by both of the clients also that they agree that they will not ask us to do something uh, wrong or they will not ask us to share some confidential information and we can ask our team members also. We can ask our team members also. Now what we can ask from our team members also that you have to make sure that you don't share any such information. Okay, so we identified the first issue which was relating to conflict of interest. We identified the another issue which is relating to confidentiality. We commented on an action that we should give a disclosure to both of them. We said that we should use separate teams. Are you people getting it? Now, what else you can do? What else you can do? Now, one action is very uniform and that can be used in multiple situations. If our firm considers that issue of conflict of interest will be significant, will be significant and it cannot be resolved, then our firm should politely decline, should politely decline Gruber company for valuation services now this is a very simple action now see what i always say to my students is that try and learn the approach with which i develop the answers try and learn this approach i am writing small small points now i have in mind that okay i have a target of eight marks i will write eight small points and i will try and cover the issue okay now a very important thing which i want to highlight here is that what many students is, do is that they develop very close points 
Now, what do you mean by close points? That all of the points are very near to each other, like all of them are explaining a very similar thing. Now, that can create a problem. See, if you look at all of my points, what I am doing is that I, first of all, picked up issue of conflict of interest. I picked up issue of confidentiality. I picked up an action of disclosure to both entities. Then we talked that, okay, you separate teams. Then we said that, okay, you can go for politely decline also. Are you people getting it? Now, now let's move forward. Now we are moving towards the sixth matter. Now, if you look at the question situation, now Gruber, Martin Gruber is selling the ships and Gruber company has asked us to give the valuation. The directors have requested that McLean assist them with the sale by performing a vendor's due diligence in which they conduct an independent review of Gruber company financial position and future prospect and produce a report on their finding to be provided to Willis company. Now you can say that when we will develop a future prospect report, we will become an advocate. We will become an advocate. Advocate of whom? We will become an advocate of Gruber company. Why we will write uh, and review the report on the Gruber company's future prospect. Okay. Now, this situation can also lead to advocacy threat advocacy threat as if our firm will report on future prospects of gruber company then it will be advocating its own audit client to willis company Okay, this will also lead to a situation of advocating your own client because you will be promoting their interest. Okay, as per ethical standards, an auditor cannot be advocate of its own audit client. Now, one student has identified a point, says, can we write a point on competence of the firm to perform valuation services? Yes, you can write, but what you need to understand is that normally the auditors should have the competence of valuation services. Okay, the auditors should have this competence. Okay, one student has identified a point that, sir, we can use independent review in our audits if we are providing this service yes you can write that also okay now let's include one more point a self review thread may also arise may also arise while auditing willis company financial statements if willis company invests in martin gruber shares now why self-review threat will arise listen to me very carefully this investment will appear in willis company financial statement and it was done on the due diligence report prepared by our firm while auditing financial statements which will include investment of which we ourselves performed due diligence earlier we may not have independent skepticism now see now, many students think that, sir, we think that our mind will not go till there. Now, this is the point where I want you all to learn to use these types of handouts. And very important, I don't ask you to learn through my handout. I want you all to develop your own handouts. 
what students do is now listen to me this is very important thing and this is my learning while i used to do my studies now this is my learning what you people do is that you read the past papers like a newspaper i will repeat it again you people read the past paper like a newspaper okay question answer question answer there is no benefit of doing this what you need to understand is that when you read a question then you read an answer you should have your book your copy in which you list down the pointers which the examiner is normally using now in ethics this approach is very useful now listen to me very carefully when we talk about ethics you people must have observed that same issues repeat every time or if i will not use the word same the better word will be similar issues similar issues repeat every time so if you have done reading of last 15 attempts or last 20 attempts ethics questions read the question read the answer and make a list of common points like i have made now obviously when i am making this list i have analyzed many past papers i have used my points and now what is the benefit of this document that every time when i develop the answer every time when i develop the answer my mind works that okay i can use this point i have read it in this answer i can use this point i have learned it in my handout okay now i can develop a good point okay so what you people need to understand what you need to people need to evaluate is that don't just read the past papers like a newspaper when you read the past papers make a list of pointers now one student told me yesterday that sir why you people why you are teaching us like we are small kids so i always say that if you want to big pass the exam you have to become a student again you have to learn like a student okay now so the first was conflict of interest the first was conflict of interest number 1 second was confidentiality third was third was that we have to go for disclosure fourth was use separate teams fifth was situation of that if conflict of interest cannot be resolved you can go for politely decline then sixth advocacy seventh self review threat and the last point which one of the student identified our firm can use our firm can use independent reviews in audit of what are the names in audits of gruber company and willis company if this valuation engagement is accepted independent reviews independent reviews will help in reducing the ethical threats is it clear now see with such a simple approach i have completed 8 marks with such a simple approach are you people getting it now many students say that sir we don't think that we will get marks on uh, this because when we read the examiner answers they are very much detailed now i will take one minute and i will try and teach you one thing what you people need to do is go on acc global and go for triple a past papers okay what i am trying to teach you people how you have to develop this learning go on the answers and rather than reading the answer itself what i recommend to my students is that go on the marking scheme the marking scheme is always given in the end now now read this marking scheme read this marking scheme see what the examiner is saying up to one mark for each relevant explained answer point now obviously what you people need to understand is that for one mark you will now write 10 lines for one mark you will write two three lines conflict of interest between gruber company and willis company conflict of interest impacts the auditor's objectivity 
recruitment that a professional accountant shall not allow conflict of interest to compromise professional requirement that a professional accountant shall not compromise okay risk relates to valuation of gruber company shares risk of breach of confidentiality full disclosure to be made safeguards may be used to reduce the threat of objectivity you can write multiple safeguards advocacy threat safeguards to reduce advocacy threat management responsibility in relation to gruber company okay obviously my friend the answer should be reflection of the marking scheme if someone develops teaches you answer which is not according to the marking scheme you will get a very beautiful zero okay so the answer should always be similar and they should always be reflection of the marking scheme so what i always advise to my students is that you people should learn to deal with the marking scheme rather than reading the answers what you people do is that you people go and read these long long answers and then you get frustrated that oh sir the examiner has written so long answer and you wrote such a small answer that is not important the important thing is that whether you cover the marking scheme or not okay now in marking scheme see there are so many points you need to cover eight points from the marking scheme to get eight marks so see we discussed about conflict of interest we discussed about confidentiality okay this one is conflict of interest okay then we identified the issue that there can be breach of confidentiality then we discussed that we should make a full disclosure then we discussed the safeguards then we said that if the conflict of interest cannot be resolved then we should politely decline okay so my advice my advice for dealing with questions relating to ethics my advice really for dealing with questions relating to ethics is to develop small small points learn the ability to evaluate the risk like just not pick up the points discuss them also okay write small points and me read this handout i will share this handout on the whatsapp group also i will share the document link on the comment section also and still if you cannot go get the document you people can contact me on my whatsapp number i will share it with you and along with this document try and develop your own handout also add some more points also i hope that this clarifies okay so these were simple eight marks now we are going back towards the part a of this question which we left that was matters specific to the planning of an initial audit engagement which should be considered in developing the audit strategy okay now now this was the part a that was of six marks which we left at the start discuss matters specific to the planning of an initial audit engagement which should be considered in developing the audit strategy of gruber company discuss the matters specific to the planning of the initial audit engagement which should be considered now what matters which we should consider now i want you all to participate with me i want you all to participate with me what are the matters specific to the planning of initial audit engagement now what do you mean by initial audit engagement initial audit engagement means first year of audit which should be considered in developing the audit strategy now how many marks six marks now see one student wrote on the comment box that we will consider about the fees my friend please stop here and listen to me fees should be considered before accepting the client what you need to understand is that we have already accepted the client so we cannot talk about the fees okay and this part is relating to the initial audit engagement first year of audit so what are the matters we will think so again i will say that professional clearance was obtained before accepting the audit my friend we have already accepted the audit 
Once you have accepted the audit, then why will you go for professional clearance? Please, again, again, discuss the matters specific to the planning of an initial audit engagement, which should be considered. Now, one thing which I want to highlight here for you all, please listen to me. Please listen to me. One thing which I want to highlight, many of the students write general answers. Don't write general answers. Use the name of the company and try and refer maximum data of the question while writing the answer. Just don't write the general answers. Number one. Now, some students are sending me procedures. If you will write procedures, it will get wrong. This is not audit procedures. Please read the answer. What is written here? Discuss the matters. He's not asking that what we should be doing. He's saying discuss the matters specific to planning of initial audit engagement. Now, what will be the matters? Please listen to me. What will be the matters? Our firm should consider. Now, listen to me how I'm writing the points. Our firm should consider now what matter our firm should consider. Our firm should consider the matters which were highlighted. Please listen to my words. Our firm should consider the matters which were highlighted in the professional clearance from the previous auditor while developing the audit strategy. Now, what does this mean? Now, when we communicated with the previous auditor while accepting the client, we have already communicated. I'm not saying that you have to communicate now. But when you already communicated it, they must have given you. They must have highlighted some issues in the entity. So you should consider those matters while developing your audit strategy. Now for this part, I will just say that keep some patience and listen to me very carefully. Believe me, you will learn how to develop the answer. Our firm should consider matters which were highlighted by previous auditor in communications done with them while acceptance of clients. If any matters, if any matters relating to accounting treatment Please listen to me. If any matters relating to accounting treatment, weakness of controls, or any professional issues were identified in those communications, then they should be considered while developing audit strategy of Gruber company. Now, see, this is a one point for which you will get one mark. Now, I will say this that many of the students who sent me the pointers here were not very much up to the mark. Now, I will say this, but uh, the major problem that many tutors say that when the examiner asks matters specific which you should be considered in planning you should start writing the audit procedures now this is wrong audit procedures are performed during the audit we are developing the audit strategy why will you write audit procedures while developing the strategy you are currently in the planning phase so the examiner has also identified it many times in his comments that the major problem with the students is that they don't know how to bifurcate, how to divide different phases of the audit. Audit planning is a different phase. Audit procedures during audit is a different phase. And reporting is a different phase. So here he is asking the matters relating to initial audit engagement, which should be considered in developing the audit strategy. Okay. One student has asked, sir, can we write the answer of part A after part B? Why do you want to attempt it afterwards? I also left the space for it. We completed the rest of the answer and then we came back to part A. 
Now in computer based exam, in computer based exam, it is very easy that you can write the you can come back and write the answer afterwards. But don't break the sequence. If you will break the sequence, your professional marks will be deducted. OK, further, what else we should consider further? We should also consider. What else we should consider further? We should also consider previous year audit report while developing while developing audit strategy of Gruber company. Previous year was not audited. Previous year was not audited by our firm. So it should be considered while develop previous year was not audited by our firm. So its audit report should be considered while developing audit strategy of current year so that if any issues were identified in it then they can be included in our audit strategy okay what I want you people to understand the requirement. Now, one more important thing. What many students do is that they try and do the answers in rush. That, okay, just uh, mix it with any other topic and just go with it. No, read the requirement, what it is asking. It is asking the matters which should be considered while developing the audit strategy. And specifically, since it is the initial audit engagement, since it is the first year of audit, what other matters you can consider? It should also be considered. It should also be considered that what are the applicable laws on Gruber company as it is an initial audit engagement of our firm may not have our firm may not have sufficient knowledge of Gruber companies business and its environment list of applicable regulations and details of business environment need to be considered while developing initial audit engagement strategy. Okay. Are you people getting it? Are you people getting it? Please, please respond. Now I have a question from you people. Please listen. Are you people feeling that there is any change of approach coming in you people? that you people were originally thinking in the wrong direction. What I'm trying to do is that I want you people to develop this sense that you have to read the requirement and you have to answer according to the requirement rather than just mixing it with other topics. Okay, see the direction of my answer, the approach of my answer that what are the matters which should be considered while developing the audit strategy. Now, what other matters you can consider? What other matters which we can consider? If, if possible, previous auditors working papers in relation to opening balances also need to be considered while developing audit strategy. Okay, this will only be possible. This will only be possible. If previous auditor shares his working paper files, this can give auditor. This can give auditor details about key risks of previous year and issues in 
opening balances. Okay. What other matter you can consider? What other matters? What other issues you can consider? Auditors should also consider. Auditors should also consider key accounting risks which were identified while accepting client while accepting client when developing audit strategy this can include this can include revenue recognition issues as they are complex in gruber company and they must have been identified while accepting gruber company these matters should be specifically considered while accepting the uh, while preparing the audit strategy of gruber company okay see i would say i would say that maximum of the points you people shared me on the question tab were not relevant for this answer which means that majority of you people were not prepared to deal with this type of requirement now the question is said sir do we get these abnormal requirements in the exam or we will get the predictable requirements only you will get the abnormal requirements you will get the requirements where you have to use your own brain but at that point of time what i say to my students is that read the requirement very carefully read the requirement very carefully now one student has identified a point here and then i will reply you first listen to the question he has asked sir we can also inquire from the previous auditor regarding why he left the audit my friend why are you writing this point why this would have already been asked while you were accepting the client now we have accepted the client and we are developing the audit strategy why will you ask his resignation reason of resignation while you are developing the audit strategy you take professional clearance at the time of acceptance you have already accepted this client you have already accepted the client and now you go to him and you ask that why did you resign he said that they are very unethical so now will you also resign from the audit we take clearance at the time of acceptance we don't take clearance while developing the strategy i hope that my answer helped you in learning and correctifying your approach are you getting it now so what did we say see i also said that we will look at the previous auditor communications but see the pattern of my writing look at the pattern our firm should consider matters which were highlighted by previous auditor which were already highlighted while the acceptance procedure while they said that that was already highlighted we will consider those issues in our audit strategy today we will not ask about the issues today because we already asked us why while we were accepting it further we should consider previous year audit report we should consider about applicable laws we should consider about working papers relating to opening balances we should consider about key risk okay now one student has asked sir can we talk about money laundering regulations specifically i would not suggest to write a separate point on money laundering regulation just write a overall point that we will look at the applicable laws one student has stated that sir can we talk about materiality sample size normally 
in audit strategy we don't get very much specific but yes you can write about it um uh, but the direction of the question is on matters which you should be considering so rather than directly writing that we will calculate the materiality you can talk that we will think about the key risk in the client as they can affect the materiality and sample size of the client okay um now I'm reading the questions and responding to the students and then I will write a few more points. We can review the results from clearance to identify issues. Yes, I have already covered this point in the first point which I have written. We can consider internal controls. Yes, we can consider. Yes, that is that can be a valid point. Um, can we discuss about additional time and resources required? Yes, you can comment. Okay, for every mark point, you will get one mark. For Accept audit planning in whole of the AAA, you should follow one mark approach. Okay, now, so one, two, three, four, and five. What can be the last point? One more very easy point. In audit strategy, auditor should specifically consider the ethical matters which were highlighted which were highlighted while accepting client these ethical issues should be targeted and resolved in audit strategy such as such as avoiding those team members which have any ethical concern or planning second partner reviews on certain areas due to ethical matters okay so if you look at my answer we have to write six points as it was of six marks first we looked at the previous auditor communication then we looked at the previous year audit report then we looked at the applicable laws then we looked at opening balance matter then we looked at the key accounting risk and applicable laws then we looked at ethical issues now one student has few students not one few students have highlighted few more good points which you people can include um we need to consider the controls of the client like if there are any control weaknesses we need to consider their key accounting policies while developing the strategy yes you can consider those things also are you people getting it so this was apparently a non routine requirement but it was not very much difficult if you read the requirement in the right direction you develop a right approach that what the examiner is asking he was asking that what are the matters which you should consider while developing the strategy now what would be a disaster in this situation the disaster would be that some student is would start writing audit procedures that we will do this we will do this we will check the bank statement we will check the board minutes now that would be a disaster he didn't ask you about procedures he asked that what are the matters which you would consider in initial auditing but obviously i would say that this was one of the requirement in which some students may not get up to the mark marks but no need to worry because if i look at this whole question if I talk about this whole question, part B was very easy. That was audit risk, which we did in the previous class. That was a very easy part. Then part C audit procedures were very easy. Then we did ethics. We did ethics. That was also very easy, which we did in today's class. Yes, you can also write in part A, you can also write one more point. But currently we are done with six points, but you can also write that we should consider sending a more experienced team in the audit of Gruber company as it is first year of audit. You can consider sending more experienced staff 
Yes, that can be a good point. Are you people getting it that how we have to develop the answer? Okay, now, so we are done with 50 marks. Congratulations. Okay, we are done with 50 marks of this question. First of all, the format of meeting note introduction. This matter is specific to the planning. Now we did it at last, but we didn't break the sequence of our answer. Because if you will break the sequence, your professional marks will be deducted. No need to write the conclusion. Conclusion is not mandatory. There will be no marks deduction if you will not write conclusion. It's not necessary. So I don't advise my students to write conclusion. Just it's sufficient. You just need to write the introduction and make the format of the um, memo, the briefing note. Then we discuss the audit risk, which we discussed in the previous class. Then we discuss these principal audit procedures. And in the today's class, we discuss the ethical issues. For ethical issues, I told you people that you have to follow a simple one mark approach. Is it clear? No. Let's move to second question. Let's move to second question, which is question number two. Okay, let's read it. I want you all to concentrate. Now, this is a 20 mark, 25 marks question. Uh, easy one. 25 marks question are very easy and these are small questions. It is 1st July 2005. You are a manager in Kelly and Company, a firm of chartered certified accountants which offers a range of assurance services. The managing director of Flynn Company, which is not currently a client of Kelly Company, has contacted you regarding a review engagement which he would like your firm to provide. Kelly and company has already contact conducted specific client identification procedures in line with money laundering regulations with satisfactory results. Flying company is operates in the food processing industry and the company is planning to build a new food processing facility in a foreign country. This will cost approximately $15 million to build and Flynn Company has approached its lenders to provide the necessary finance. The following exhibits available on the left-hand side of the screen provide information relevant to the question. Flynn Company information regarding Flynn Company and review engagement your firm is invited to provide cash flow forecast. So apparently, the information which we have read till here, obviously we haven't read the whole question in detail. What we are finding out is, that we are an audit firm called as Kelly Company, and we have been asked by Flynn Company to provide some review engagement. Okay, Flynn Company is not our existing audit client, and there is no money laundering issue. Now let's read the first exhibit so that we can get the data. I will make it a bit bigger. Now, Flynn Company is an unlisted company whose main activity involves processing frozen food. The company has several processing plants in its home country and one located in a foreign country near land. In order to expand its product range, the company is planning to build a new facility and begin processing in another foreign country, far land. Land company has approached its provider of finance, Morton's Bank, to provide a $15 million loan, which will cover the necessary capital expenditure. Nearland and Farland both have a different currency than that used by Flynn Company. Okay, so if we read the data till here, basically what we are getting to know is that Flynn Company that Flynn Company is planning to expand in overseas. Flynn Company is planning to expand in overseas and they are going for a bank loan. Okay. Now, Morton's Bank has asked Flynn Company to provide a business plan for next three years in support of the loan application. The business plan includes forecast statement of profit or loss, 
cash flow. The bank has requested that forecast to be, be subject to an independent review and that a review report should be included with the loan application. So apparently this question is of prospective financial information. You must remember this topic, which is PFI, prospective financial information, because we are talking about forecast statement of PL and the cash flows. Playing company is expecting to submit the business plan and the review report to the bank on 5th of August. Okay. Now, they want this report by 5th of August. If you read the question, what is the today's date? The today's date is 1st July. And they expect that this report will be submitted to the bank by 5th of August. So I think that they are in too much hurry. If you read the question, if you read the question, it is clearly written that the today's date is 1st of July. So if the today's date is 1st of July, then giving a report on 5th of August would be too much hurry. Clean companies audited by Roxy Associate, a new audit manager, Mary Sunshine, has recently been recruited to your firm by us. We are not Roxy. Our name is Kelly from Flynn Company, where she worked in the internal audit department, and she told you the following. I know that Flynn Company auditor Roxy Associates has performed review engagements for the company in the past. I am aware that the latest external audit report for the year ended 31st March 2005 included a material uncertainty relating to going concern section due to the company's liquidity problems. In his communication with Cali Company, the managing director of Flynn Company has suggested that should Cali Company provide the report to the bank and assuming that the finance is provided, he will be willing to remove Roxy Associate. So I would say that the finance director is trying, the managing director is trying to uh, give us some self-interest. He's trying to give us some bribe. Okay, make a favorable report, convince the bank and you will get the entire audit and appoint Cali company to provide the audit services. The managing director has also requested that Mary Sunshine is the part of the review team and the audit team giving her previous experience. Now, he's also requiring us to include someone in the team. And obviously, that is Mary Sunshine, which is who was their ex-employee. So that can also lead to issue of familiarity. Okay. Then he has given us a cash flow forecast. And uh, this forecast is given to us in the form of a spreadsheet document. Okay. This forecast is given to us in form of a spreadsheet document. Uh, he has given us a forecast that how what the forecast is about on which we have to develop a review report. And he has given us some notes also. OK, so if we read the first requirement, what he is saying, let's read the first requirement. Using the information in exhibit one, only use the exhibit one. Using the information in exhibit one, Evaluate the matters to be considered. Evaluate the matters to be considered by Kelly Company in deciding whether to accept Flynn Company as a client of the firm and whether to perform the review engagement to report on the business plan. Note, you do not include the matters relating specifically to client due diligence know your client so don't write the basic know your client procedures okay so don't write that okay we will uh, look at their business and things like that we already know that client because we have already performed the money laundering procedures he wrote in the question so what we have to write is evaluate the matters to be considered by kelly company in deciding whether to accept plain company as a client of the firm and whether to perform the review engagement so this is the first requirement which he is asking. Okay, this is the now there are no professional marks in this question. Okay, so the name we are doing question number two.
Okay. Question number two, and this is our first requirement. Evaluate the matters. Evaluate the matters to be considered by Cali company in deciding whether to accept Plain company as a client of the firm and whether to perform the review engagement. Now I want you all to participate, use the questions tab and give me some pointers which you consider that should be included in the answer. What should be the pointers in your opinion? What should be the pointers which I can include? Okay, what are the matters which we should consider? Now, I will say that for every point, you will get one mark, okay? For every point, you will get one mark. I want you all to participate and share some points. What points which you will consider? Everyone, what are the matters you will consider? What are the matters you will consider? before accepting the engagement now this is the scenario i'm opening in front of you now there are bit ethical issues also in this question okay now there are some ethical issues what are the ethical issues and then there are other issues also now again i will say that don't write general points stick to the question the first point which i would prefer covering here is self-interest that he's saying that if we provide the report and they get a favor, they get a loan, they will remove their previous auditor. So the first point which I will consider here is self-interest threat. The managing director of Flynn Company is offering us a self-interest. He's saying that, okay, perform the review of this engagement. Perform the review of this engagement. And if we get the loan, we will make you our complete auditor. Okay. I would again say that, say that many of the students who are responding to me on the question tab are not reading the question. You people are not focusing on the requirement. Believe me, this will become the reason of your failure. Don't do this. Don't rush. We are not playing rapid fire. You prepare this paper for six months. You don't write in rapid fire. Think before writing the answer. I don't understand that why you people are in so rush. And when you people go for rushing towards the point, you give weak points. Okay, so try and concentrate the data of the question rather than using your general knowledge. This is not a general knowledge paper. Okay, now the first will be self-interest, right? because he's offering us a self-interest then we need to consider that why they are not using their existing auditor roxy associate when roxy associate has performed review engagements in the past why they are not using their existing auditor we need to think about it we need to think about it then we need to think about the material uncertainty which is already given on the audit report are they financially sound Will they be able to pay us? I want you all to develop the approach. What I think that you people lack is the right approach to write the answer. See, what are the matters to be considered? I will underline this so that maybe you people to accept plain company. What are the matters? Okay, what are the matters which you will consider? We will consider self-interest issue, self-interest issue created by managing director of Flynn Company. The managing director of Flynn Company created a self-interest issue when he told to us that, okay, I will give you the entire audit. Yes, now comes the right point. We will think about their integrity. Integrity of Flynn Company, integrity of Flynn Company, that why they are offering inducement for favorable report. Now this is the point when I want you people to think in the direction of the question. Some more points, some more points. 
okay we will think about self interest created by managing director he is creating our self interest that okay your self interest will be you want our complete audit do you want our complete audit what you have to do is you just need to make sure that we get the finance provided you just need to make sure that we get the finance provided okay be our friend and get the complete audit what else you need to consider it need to be considered that why logzi associate is not given this engagement okay maybe they want to hide something now some good points are coming why flynn company wants their ex employee to be in audit and review team selection of team is choice of audit partner i will write the complete answer i'm just making a list for you people so that you people can have an idea before developing the answer then you can write about familiarity threat if we will include the ex employee then you can say what are the matters to be considered material uncertainty on gc needs to be considered as a uh, flin company may not be financially sound okay are you people getting it if we become an auditor also if we become an auditor also then this transaction will make us an advocate of flink company now if they are saying that okay you become our auditor also yes the advocacy threat for bank loan negotiation because we will get in this bank loan negotiation activity so now a very important thing which i will say to you people is uh, that developing the answer is not difficult if you develop a right mindset listen to me developing an answer is not an issue if you develop a right mindset if you once start going on the right track of thinking the answer the answer will start developing automatically okay yes this question is similar to ethics and the reason being is that if you read the situation if you read the situation this situation is more about ethics you can also include you can also include the points which are relating to matters to consider before accepting pfi that you will consider about the types of assumptions they have included you will consider about uh, the deadline the deadline they are giving is very short you can consider about the competence of our firm now these can be smaller points the simpler points which you can include deadline deadline can be considered you can think about like uh, competence of our firm in this industry you can think about the types of assumptions which are included in this report okay uh sir do you have any handout which include these kind of resource responses yes i have the handout uh, okay i will share the handout for pfi also don't worry i have an handout basically i have a handout on every topic um <laughs> uh, but okay i will share handout of pfi also don't ask for all the handouts because uh, i have a family to serve for which i charge some fees okay now so evaluate the matters to be considered evaluate the matters to be considered by kelly company now there is no problem in um, sharing the handout with you people the problem is that you people then share it too much further so uh, that affects my commercial activities <laughs> okay yes i i i'll share i'll share uh, the document of pfi and i'll try and share the other documents also i'll be more than happy if you people pass the exam with the flying marks 
So evaluate the matters to be considered by Kelly Company in deciding whether to accept Lynn Company as a client of the firm and whether to perform the review engagement to report on business plan. So what should be the matters which we use, which we should be considering? Uh, we should be considering about the self-interest issue which the managing director created by offering us that, okay, you will get the whole audit. We need to think about the integrity. We need to think that whether, why the existing auditors were not offered such service. Okay, we need to think that why ex-employee is being forced to be included familiarity thread, material uncertainty issue. We will explain each of the point. We will develop the answer. But what my primary objective was to develop your thinking process. That's why I listed these points. OK. Uh, one student has written, sir, can the forecast be manipulated as going concern issue is created? You can cover it in material uncertainty point that maybe the company is just trying to get the loan to cover its liquidity issues. Okay, so we will develop these points, but uh, let's go on a break for 15 minutes and then we'll come back and uh, we'll develop these points. Okay, so let's go for a break for 15 minutes. You people also go and take some fresh air and then we will start developing this part and we, then we look at requirement B also. Okay.
Okay. So let's resume. So before the break, we were discussing this question number two in which we were discussing the matters to be considered, which should be considered before accepting the engagement. Just a minute. The engagement of uh, Flynn Company, the PFI engagement. OK. Just a minute. Some student has asked me a question. So considering they want a favorable report, we need to consider whether Flynn Company will give us access to all financial documents. Yes, they will give the access. They haven't said anything like that. They just uh, offered us that if you give a favorable report, um, we will give you the entire audit engagement also of ours. So obviously anyone who is asking for a review engagement will give you the access for their documents. Okay, that would be very basic thing to uh, write in the examination. Okay, so let's start writing the answer. We identified the points. Now we are starting developing them. Okay, now. So evaluate the matters to be considered by Kelly Company in deciding whether to accept Flynn Company as a client of the firm and whether to perform the review engagement to report on the business plan. Now. Uh, we will start developing each of the point. Now, what you need to understand is that each point will worth one mark. So don't write it in too much detail. Okay, limit your answer. And very important thing, try to understand that for each mark, you will get one mark. So don't write more than two to three lines. Three, 3.5 lines will be maximum. Okay, Flynn Company, Flynn Company Managing Director, has offered to Kelly Company that if they perform review of forecast data and Flynn Company is successful in getting loan from bank, then Flynn Company will give them their entire audit work. This creates a self-interest as while reviewing, a self-interest threat as while reviewing, as while reviewing uh, forecast data, our firm may get biased, may get biased in order to get may get biased and give favorable report in order to get the entire audit engagement. Okay, so I will repeat it again. I want you all to concentrate on it. The first issue which is being identified here is that the Flynn Company Managing Director has told us that if you give perform this review and you give a favorable report, then we will give you this entire audit work. So it is a self-interest threat. Now, why is it a self-interest threat? Because this attraction, this motivation that we need the entire audit work may force us that we don't do audit in the independent manner. Okay. Further, concern on integrity of Flynn Company is also created due to offer of entire audit work due to offer of entire audit work. Flynn Company may be using this factor as an inducement for Cali Company to give a favorable report on their forecast so that so that Flynn Company is successful in getting the loan, okay? So we discussed the points before going to the break. And as I told you people that it is very important that you read the data of the question rather than writing the general points. Until and unless you will read the data of the question, you will never be able to develop a good point. 
okay you'll never be able to develop good points read the data of the question read the requirement and then try to understand that what the examiner is trying to ask okay so here the examiner is trying to ask that what are the matters which you will be considering while accepting the plane company engagement now in the data the managing director gave us an offer which is creating a self-interest threat then we discussed that it also creates a concern on their integrity okay we highlighted these points already it also needs to be considered it also needs to be considered that why Flynn Company existing auditor rocks the associates is not performing this that why Flynn Company existing auditor rocks the associate is not performing this engagement in the past rocks the associate has performed has performed such engagements. Now, how did we know that Roxy Associate has performed such engagements? Because in the comments by Mary Sunshine, if you remember, in the comments of Mary Sunshine, in the comments of Mary Sunshine, it was clearly written that I know that Flynn Company Auditor Roxy Associate has performed review engagements for the company in the past. Now we need to consider that now what was the issue that they are not performing such engagement. In past, Ravzi Associate has performed such engagements for Flynn Company. Okay, reason of this needs to be evaluated as there may be some ethical issue involved. So we need to consider about it. So for every point, you will have one more. One student has asked that, sir, how we need to work on time management skill. So for time management skill, I always say to my students is that the only solution is that you have to do these complete papers within the time limit. See, what you need to understand is that you learn a topic, you do the the topical past papers this will never improve your time management skill until and unless you will do complete papers within the time constraints okay because when you look at the complete papers you get some good requirements and you get some difficult requirements and very importantly you also need to understand and very importantly you also need to understand that you have to write in a limited form you don't need to do overwriting. You have to write in limited form. Like for one mark, you have to restrict yourself at three, 3.5 lines. Now, since many of you don't practice the complete papers, what happens in the exam is that you do overwriting and then that results in time management issues. Okay, let's move forward. Now, fourth point is why Plain Company wants their exist ex employee in the audit team now managing director of flame company has specifically required has specifically required to include include who what was the name to include mary sunshine to include mary sunshine in audit in audit and review team. This creates a concern on integrity as it is decision of audit partner to decide the audit team. Client should not require specific employees to be included in team. Okay, this creates a concern that they may want to hide some data by including Mary Sunshine in audit team, in audit team. Okay, so very important thing we need to understand that we cannot take the dictation of the client 
that who should be included in the audit team and who should not be included. Even if we are including Mary Sunshine on the request of managing director, what we need to understand is that we should not be giving any influencing position to her. Okay, because if she will get an influencing position in the audit team, it will again create an issue. Now, if Mary Sunshine is included in audit team, in audit or in review team, then it will create issue of familiarity also. Why it will create issue of familiarity also? Mary Sunshine was an ex-employee of Flynn Company. She may use her existing knowledge. She may use her existing knowledge of Flynn Company. Of Flynn Company during audit, which will affect independent skepticism which will affect independent skepticism required during audit activity. Now, what do you mean by this? Now, this is very important thing. If I know someone already from the past, listen to me. If I know someone already from the past, I will never review him with independent skepticism because my past knowledge, my past understanding will continue to affect my independent skepticism today. It will never allow me to think with an independent mindset. Okay, so I made a list of points for you people. First of all, the attraction of an offer that you will get an audit, this creates self-interest threat. Why he is giving us an offer? This creates issue of integrity. Why their existing auditor is not working? Then why is forcing us to include someone in the audit team? Then we will say that if we include her, it will create issue of familiarity. Okay. And even if we include her on their request, we should make sure that Mary Sunshine should not have any influencing position in the audit activity. Now, point number six, material uncertainty. Material uncertainty, ongoing concern included in Flynn Company's recent audit report also needs to be considered also needs to be considered while while deciding to accept the engagement okay this creates concern on their liquidity position and their ability to pay the firm fees. This is very important. We are not doing the work uh, uh, for social services. If the client is in liquidity problem and he do not pay our dues, then that will be a very big problem. Further, further, it also creates a possibility that they may be taking loan by name of expansion to resolve their liquidity crisis so we need to consider this okay are you people understanding it please respond to me everyone okay so what we need to understand is what we need to evaluate is that what are the factors which we will be considering what are the factors which we will be considering while taking a decision? While taking a decision that whether we should accept Clean Company as our client or not. So we first made a list of the points and then we are explaining it. See, if you look at each of my points, I'm writing with a very clear mindset that I will get one mark for each point. Okay, the important thing is to remain relevant. Yes, don't write excess points. No, there is no need to use headings. No need. Just think of it. We are giving service for one mark. 
One mark for each point. This is too much for the examiner. He should be happy on it. Okay. Now one student has asked a question, sir. What if we are not able to develop 10 points? Then one small advice for you. We pass at 50 marks. We don't pass at 100 marks. So don't waste time for perfection. Now this is very important. Don't waste time for perfection. Save your time. Your time management is very important. Rather than wasting the time and thinking for 10 points, it is much better to save time and move forward. Okay? And see, you can never be ideal. You can never write like me or you can never like, write like an examiner because um, the examiner is too much experience and I'm also far more experienced. And even I'm not writing in the exam situation. Okay? So you need to write like, like you are a student, you are in an exam situation and you have to write reasonably. You cannot write absolute answers. Now let's move forward. Seventh, if we become an auditor, then this will also create an advocacy threat. If our firm will negotiate with the bank on behalf of, on behalf of Flynn Company uh, to make sure they get the loan, then this will create, then this will create issue of advocacy also. Why this will create an issue of advocacy also? Being an assurance provider, being an assurance provider, it is not permitted to advocate or promote the client interest in front of third parties. Okay, so I think this is very easy. We are just thinking and we are developing points that these all are the factors which we will consider before accepting the engagement. Okay, so seventh point was that if we become an auditor, then this will make us an advocate. Then the deadline also needs to be considered what do you mean by deadline today's date is first july 20x5 and flynn company expects and flynn company expects what do they expect flynn company expects to submit all documents till 5 August 20x5. It is a very short deadline as currently they haven't prepared the forecast data. So they haven't prepared the forecast data. Therefore, performing review in very short time will affect the quality our firm should consider negotiating a more flexible deadline okay or a more convenient deadline okay then ninth point which we identified was we will get competence of our firm to perform the valuation services Normally, the audit firms do have the competency to perform the valuation services. Normally, the firms do have the competence, but still we need to consider that whether we have the competence to provide the valuation services specific to this industry. Competence of our firm to perform valuation service also needs to be evaluated. Normally, auditors do have the competence to perform valuations, but still it needs to be evaluated that whether, that whether our firm has relevant industry knowledge and skills or not. Yes, we can also can think about the fees. We can also include about fees. 
Now that can be an advice that if you want to meet the strict deadline, you should think about including more experienced staff. Okay, and the last point will be on types of assumptions. Lastly, it also needs to be considered that what type of assumptions are used while developing this forecast data. If hypothetical, if hypothetical assumptions are used, then it will increase risk of engagement because hypothetical assumptions are more risky. Okay, hypothetical assumptions are baseless assumptions. In contrast, best estimates based on trends reduce risk of engagement. If the best estimates are used, now see there are two types of things. One is hypothetical assumptions and one are best estimates. So if you look at it, see, I would say that uh, scoring these 10 marks would be very easy. It was not difficult. Now I have a question from you. When this paper is so easy and it is so easy to solve, why only 35% pass rate? 65% of the students fail in this exam. Why? So I always say to my students that it is your overconfidence which leads to your failure. How many of you are repeaters who have already given this exam earlier? How many of you? Don't, don't feel ashamed. How many of you are repeaters? One student, two, three, four. Many are now replying. Now I have a question from you people. Now, Answer me very honestly. When you gave the exam first time, how many complete papers did you attempt it and get them marked from the tutor? So my opinion is, my opinion, now students have started responding none, zero. My opinion is that hardly 10% of the students do complete papers and get them checked. I teach around 200 students in one attempt and believe me 10 to 15 percent send me the assignments for checking most of them don't send their assignments don't send their mocks even though i charge them for this history i have a separate email id i try and get them marked but still the students don't submit their assignments they don't submit their complete papers so believe me, only thing which will increase your chances of passing is practice. Do complete papers, send them to the teacher and get them marked. Yes, it is true that since 15-20% get their paper check, then 35% pass rate globally is a very good result. Because I would say 15-20% get passed due to their uh, parents' prayers. So see, practice is very important. Do complete papers, get them marked, send to your tutor and learn the feedback. And don't do all the papers together. Send papers one by one so that your tutor marks them. He gives you the feedback. OK, and then you improve in the next paper. OK, whatever your age is, whatever you are a professional student or a basic student, whoever you are, the only key to pass, the only key to pass is practice. And that is what I have learned. OK, if you want few papers to be marked, even you are not my student, I will facilitate you that you people can send me on my WhatsApp one paper. One mock paper I will check for you all for free for any charge without any charges. But one paper, please, because the, the exams are near. We have to uh, check for our, ex our own students also. But yes, if any one of you want their complete one mock paper mark, I will mark it for free. Okay. Yeah, for we, I can uh, check additional papers for obviously my students, but for all of you, I'm uh, giving you one uh, feedback or one mock paper free of charge. But believe me, 
I'm seeing it here on the platform that uh, despite of this, I'm giving you this facility for free. Hardly 10, 15 students will send it for marketing. Okay, please make sure they do send and get a feedback. This will improve your chances of us. Okay, now. So, uh, what are the matters to be considered? The first matter was self-interest rate. The second matter was uh, um, the integrity of the client that why the client is trying to bribe us. Okay, one student is asking, sir, from where we can get more. There is no need of more. Pick up the recent papers and start doing them. Okay, the mocks are also made from the actual past papers. So pick up one paper and do it within the exam time, within the exam pressure. And it would be much better if you will do on the exam software. So that you will learn how to use the tools of the software and you can increase your speed. Now, um, then we discussed that why their existing auditor rocks the associate. Why their existing auditor rocks the associate is not doing this engagement. Why they are moving away from their existing auditor. Maybe there is some ethical issue. Then managing director specifically asked to include one of their ex-employee in the team. That is also not good. Because the audit team is through our decision, not through their decision. Then if we include her, it will create familiarity threat. So one one mark, five points. Six point will be material uncertainty on going concern, which is included in the report. Now this creates a doubt that whether they will be able to pay our fees or not. Seventh point. If we go and talk on their behalf with the bank, we will become their advocate. Eighth point is on deadline. Ninth point is on competence. And tenth point is on the types of assumptions. I hope that this is clear. Okay, so we are done with the first 10 marks of this question. I will delete this list of points which we made for discussion only. Now we are moving towards the requirement B. I want you all to concentrate on it. Requirement B, which is of 15 marks. No, there is no need to give conclusion. No conclusion. No conclusion. Not even in question number one. No conclusion. Okay, in question number one, you give introduction because there is professional marks in rest of the questions. Even there is no need to give introduction also. See, I start. I started writing the answer directly. One mark for each point. Okay, now. Let's look at requirement B using the information in exhibit two. Okay. No, 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 not writing conclusion will not affect your professional marks. Conclusion is not required by the examiner. He only requires introduction and the format of the briefing note. And that is only in question number one, where there are professional marks. In question number one, also the conclusion is not required. In the rest of the question, there are no professional marks. So when there are no professional marks, you don't need to write anything. Just write what he has asked. Okay. Using the information in exhibit two and assuming that Kelly company accepts the engagement to review the forecast part B one for six marks. Evaluate the assumptions used by the management. Evaluate the assumptions used by the management. And the completeness of the cash flow forecast. Explain why particular assumptions should be challenged and approached with professional skepticism. So now we need to look at the exhibit number two. You have to evaluate the assumptions and you have to comment on the completeness of the forecast. There are six marks. So let's look at it. Let's move towards part B1. Okay, so we are doing part B1. I have copy pasted the requirement here. So evaluate. Evaluate the assumptions used by the management and completeness 
of the cash flow forecast prepared explaining why particular assumptions should be challenged okay so now now let we are moving towards the exhibit number 2 i want you all to concentrate on it now this is the forecast which is given to us now cash flow forecast for the 3 years to 30th june 2008 i want you all to concentrate on it 6 months to 31st december 2005 2006 31st december 2005 then 31st december 2006 then 31st december 2006 30th june 2007 31st december 2007 and 30th june 2008 so the data is of 6 6 months okay the data given is of 6 6 months okay now if you remember that today's date what was the today's date if you remember in the question what was the today's date if you remember in the question it was written here that today's date is july 2005 that today's date is july 2005 they will give the report to the bank on august 2005 okay now if you look at the forecast data So for the first six months, thirty-first December two thousand and five, then thirtieth June six, then thirty-first December, so it's six 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 months data. Average monthly sales two hundred to two thirty-four, then two sixty-five, two eighty-eight, three zero eight, three one eight. Then this is the total revenue of six months. This is the total revenue of the six months. If you look at it. He has taken the average monthly sales and he multiplied it by six. Then he has told us that what will be the cash inflows, what will be the average cash collection we will get. Like from the revenue of twelve hundred, we will get cash collection of one zero five zero because the sales will also be on credit. Now these are the operating expenses. Now there are marketing for new product ranges, interest payment which is constant. dividends loan receipt of 15 million he will spend 7.5 million and 7.5 million and then he made the net cash flow statement okay notes and key assumptions monthly sales are based on management forecast with predicted sales growth as follows In December 2005, there will be zero percent growth. In June 2006, there will be 17 percent growth. Then 13.2 percent growth. Then 8.7, 6.9, and 3.4 percent sales. Sales. Sales are expected to increase in 2006 when the new processing facility. opens in farland the new product range are expected to be very popular and the product launch will be supported by an advertising campaign in addition to output from the new processing facility production levels at existing facilities are planned to increase by at least 10% he says that we will increase our existing productions also by 10% on average cash is received in following pattern 25% in month of sale 50% following the month of sale and 25% two months after the sale operating expenses are forecast to increase over the three year production period as production increases the company is expecting to benefit from economies of scale the new processing facility is planned to commence production on 31st march 2006 so we have just read the data till here okay now let's read the requirement again before starting to answer it evaluate the assumptions evaluate the assumptions which are used by the management evaluate the assumptions which are used by the management and the completeness of the cash flow forecast 
So first you have to talk about the assumptions and then you also have to talk about the completeness of the forecast that whether in your opinion the forecast is complete or not, whether you think that forecast provides complete data or not, or whether there is something which is missing in the forecast. Okay, whether the forecasted data is complete or not. Okay, so let's look at it. I want you all to listen to me very carefully. Now, if I talk about the assumptions, he's saying that the new production facility is planned to commence production on 31st March 2006. Now, just give it a thought. Just give it a thought. Today's date is 1st July 2005. On 5th August 2005, we said that we will submit the data to the bank. If you remember, on 5th August 2005, we said that we will submit the data to the bank. Now, when you will submit the data to the bank on 5th August, obviously, bank will take one or two months to process the data and then they will give you the loan. Let's take it two months on the safe side. It can be variable. Like if you get the cash amount till September or October 2005, then he says that our production facility will get ready in such a short span of time. And not only it will get ready, it will start to commence the production. Now, this is obviously a very questionable thing that normally the things are not very much past and very important thing. You are going in another country. If you remember, they are going in a different country, which is far land. So how the things will happen so fast that you will get the land, you will get the raw material, you will get the labor, you will build up the production. Like on 5th of August, you are submitting the data and then sept uh, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. In eight months, you within these eight months, what will happen? You will get the loan. You will purchase the land, you will get everything and you will make the production facility also. Now, eight months are pretty much fast. We cannot even build our house in eight months. Constructing a house also takes one or two years. You will make whole production facility and that will start production in 31st March. That is very questionable. Then one more thing. Now, I want you all to participate with me. Question their assumptions. In six months to 30th June, he says that our sale will increase by 17%. In March, your production facility will start April, May, June, and you will generate 17% of the sale. How is it possible? How is it possible? Then if you look at the data, he didn't think about any exchange rate issues. What about the exchange rate fluctuations? Where is exchange rate assumptions? Just think about it. There is no taxation matters which are included. The finance cost. Now, this is a very good point if you people are able to identify. What is the finance cost? It is 30, 30, 30, 30. Now, I want you all to pay, take out your calculators. Take out your calculators. For six months, the finance cost is 30. So for whole year, it will be 60. The loan is of 15 million. Okay. So what you can say is that on a loan of 15,000, you are just paying a finance cost of 60. So if I calculate an effective rate, it gives me an effective rate of 0.4%. What a lovely bank you have, please. We also want to take a loan from them. You are paying a finance cost of 30 for six months. So for whole year, it will be 60. 30 plus 30, which means 60 is the finance cost of whole year. And the loan balance is 15,000. So this gives me the effective rate multiplied by 100.4%, which is this bank. Please also give us their number. Obviously, these are uh, uh, hypothetical assumptions. Okay, so what he is asking from us, listen to me, evaluate the assumptions used by the management and the completeness of the cash flow forecast. 
okay so we can talk about assumption on start of production facility on Ma in on 31st march 2006 is questionable assumption of increase in sales by 17% in 6 months of 30th june 2006 obviously this is questionable okay finance cost of 60 on loan of 15000 is questionable as effective rate is as effective rate will be 0.4% obviously this is questionable no tax matters are included if you look at the forecast he says that in this entire cash flow forecast there is no tax revenue cash inflow operating expense marketing interest dividend loan receipt capital expenditure and there is no tax okay there is no tax in it okay then one very good point one student has asked that in the very first quarter you are paying dividend in the quart 6 months of 31st december 2005 you are paying a dividend of 100 whereas your opening cash is only 50 the bank will hit you so hard that you are using the loan amount to pay the dividends the loan is for the project not for paying out the dividend okay so we have to question the reasonableness of their assumptions and we have to comment on the completeness of the data then you can comment that no exchange rate impact is considered what about the exchange rate you are going in a different country that is far land and you are not even thinking about the exchange rate issue so what are the assumptions which they have taken you have to question their assumptions and you have to comment on the completeness of the cash flow forecast then if you look at their assumptions i think it's very simple question there is a bunch of rubbish assumptions they have used they are saying that uh, in the operating expense the company is expecting to benefit from economies of scale as production increases at each production facility now this is also very important to ask that when you are going to a completely different country which will have a separate production facility then how will you get economies of scale economies of scale usually happen when we increase our capacities at the same place you are going to a different country obviously rather than having economies of scale there is a very high chance that you will get dis economies of scale you will get dis economies economies of scale means bulk purchase discounts big operation benefits so considering that you are going in a completely new market and you are expecting economies of scale in the starting years obviously this is not very much wise then he said that we will increase the production level at each of the production facility to increase by at least 10% now there is also a question there is also a question that whether the current facilities have some spare capacity you can also yes one student has asked we can also raise a concern that the forecast does not include any repayment plans because considering this forecast and slow development of cash flow the question is that how will you repay 15 million okay so there can be several matters economies of scale is questionable okay there is a a question on their assumption that they will achieve economies of scale growth in existing production facilities is questionable that whether existing production facilities have at least 10% 
have at least 10 percent uh, spare capacity that they can grow their production facility. So we just need to write six points because this requirement is of six marks. So let's start developing the points. Flynn company has as now one mark for each point. OK, now one student has asked very good question. Only marketing cost will be incurred in first one year and then the sales will continue to rise. How is it possible? Marketing is an ongoing process. Flynn company assumes that its production facility will be ready to produce output by 31st March 20X6. It is an optimistic assumption. It is an optimistic assumption. Why is it an optimistic assumption? As, as it currently plans to submit documents to bank on 5th August 20X5. Assuming that in eight months, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, assuming that in eight months till 31st March 20X6, it will get loan, it will purchase land in other country and will arrange all logistics and will also be able to start production and will also be able to start production is bit optimistic and unreal okay so you are taking a very unrealistic assumption that you will submit the documents to the bank in, on 5th of August and in just eight months, the bank will review it. They will give you the loan, you buy the land, you will get the labor, you will get all the logistics, you will complete the entire production facility and in eight months, you will start production. How is it possible? Then, assumption, assumption that sales will increase by 17% in six months to 30th June 20X6 is also unrealistic. Why is it also unrealistic? Think about it. It's also unrealistic. As per playing company assumptions, new production facility will start from 31st March 20X6. In just three months, it will be able to increase total sales by 17%. In just three months, it will be able to increase total sales by 17%. It is, it is not realistic. It is abnormal as startup problems and ability to gain market a new country is being ignored. Now, what do you think? You will construct a new facility and on the very first day, you will open the button and the facility will work on full capacity. This is not practical. In first six months, obviously, there will be many problems. Okay, now let's move forward. Finance cost of 60 for whole year is also unrealistic on loan of 15,000. Why is it unrealistic on loan of 15,000? It gives effective interest rate of 0.4% only. Such a low interest rate is not practically possible okay and you are going for a new country obviously the bank will ask a premium for their risk rather than just offering you 0.4 percent annually okay forecast is incomplete 
as it currently fails to include impact of tax. Okay. Uh, taxation impact will be part of forecast and currently it is not considered and then exchange rate issues are also not considered are also not considered in forecast due to fluctuation because there are different currencies in all countries Ireland is a completely different country due to fluctuations of exchange rate actual collections of plain company may change believe me it is such an easy question or i would say it is such an easy exam yes trial periods are not covered you are going into a new industry and you are not considering that there will be some trial periods there will be some startup problems okay then assumption of plain company that they will get benefit of economies of scale is also questionable why is it also questionable think about it okay plain company is entering in a new in a new and separate market of far land assuming assuming that it will get economies of scale there is not a practical assumption it may create it may create it may create this economies of scale if you would have said this economies of scale i would have agreed because when you go to a new market um, your focus gets diverted it may get this economies of scale due to new market being entered okay so we have to evaluate the assumptions of the management we have to evaluate the assumptions of the management which they have used in the forecast that was given in the exhibit 2 this was the exhibit 2 we have to evaluate their key assumptions and we have to comment on the completeness of the data we have to evaluate their key assumptions and we have to comment on the completeness of the forecast so we question that assuming that the production facility will start production till 31st of march this is questionable sales will increase by 17% in the first 6 months this is questionable low interest rate is questionable we haven't thought about tax this is questionable interest rate is ignored this is questionable the assumption of economies of scale is questionable then you are saying that your existing production facilities your existing production facilities if you read this point your existing production facilities will increase their output by at least 10% this is questionable that whether the existing production facilities have spare capacity or not how will they increase okay yes one student has asked that sir the inflation data and all these things are not considered obviously this also makes the data incomplete okay yes one very good point identified by the student it also needs to be considered that what is the credit uh practice which is being offered in far land this is not considered okay okay are you people getting it
Okay, are you people getting it? Now, let's move to another requirement. Are you people getting it? Okay, so in this part, we commented on the validity of the assumptions and we commented that whether the forecast was complete or not. Is it clear? Now, let's move forward. Now, very easy requirement. Very easy requirement. Let's look at it. Discuss or design the examination procedures which should be performed in review of the fling company cash flow forecast what should be the examination procedures what should be the examination procedures which we should be performing design the examination procedures which should be performed in the review of fling company cash flow forecast what should be the procedures which we should be performing? Now, this is of nine marks. Nine procedures. We look at the forecast and we'll design the procedures. Like you will say that we will take the breakup of the operating expenses. We will take the breakup of the capital expenditure. We will check the opening cash balance. We will look at the loan agreement to confirm the finance cost. Simple, simple procedures. Nine easy marks. Nine easy marks design the examination procedures which should be performed in the review of Lynn company cash flow forecast very easy nine marks let's do it now these are my favorite marks i always say to the students that when you ever get the marks for procedures these are very easy but you people will be um, i would say surprised to hear that once uh, uh, we got one student's script rechecked. So his most of the marks were deducted in procedures. And examiner also highlights in his comments that normally when the students write the procedures, they write two general procedures. Don't write too much general procedures. Try and relate the procedures to the data of the question. Try and relate to the numbers. I've already taught you people that how to write a procedure. You write what the procedure is and what will it verify. Okay, so let's start writing the procedures. I want you all to concentrate. Now, so the first procedure will be. Now, one thing in forecast financial information, you can write some general procedures also that you will review the uh, competence of the person who prepared this forecast. You will look at the accounting policies that whether they have been used consistently. You will recalculate the entire forecast. These are some general procedures which can be used every time. Okay, but don't write too much general procedures. You can get two, three marks on these general procedures. So first of all, I will write the easy ones because when we talk about procedures on the forecast, some procedures are general, which examiner also writes every time. Okay, now. Uh, competence and expertise of the person who prepared forecast needs to be reviewed as AP do not holds relevant competence then reliability of forecast will get questionable okay so the first procedure will be competence and expertise of the person who prepared forecast needs to be reviewed okay then it needs to be reviewed review that whether accounting policies used in forecast are consistent with general with accounting policies currently used by Flynn company in its financial 
statements. See what I'm doing. First of all, I started with the general procedures. Whenever you are writing procedures on the forecast, these are the general procedures that you review competence and expertise. Okay, review competence and expertise of the person who prepared the forecast as if you do not have the relevant competence, the reliability of the forecast will be questionable. Review the accounting policies, recalculate the entire forecast data to verify its accuracy. Now, these are the three general procedures. There are other general procedures also, but we write two, three general procedures because otherwise the examiner normally puts a limit. The normal examiner normally puts a limit on general procedures, but there are two, three marks available for general. So competence and expertise of the person, review the accounting policy and recalculate. Now let's move towards some specific procedures. Review the proposed loan agreement of bank to confirm the interest rate used by, used by who? Used by Flynn company in its forecast as it is abnormally low at 0.4%. So you need to review the loan agreement. Now you people can have other procedures also like if you look at the examiner answer is written like 30 procedures, but you just need to write nine of them. So nine procedures are nothing in uh, this forecasted data. So you can review the proposed loan agreement. Okay. Review breakup of capital expenditure. Review breakup of capital expenditure of $15 million to verify, to verify that what amounts will be spent on which assets. Okay which assets will be purchased, we need to verify. Okay. Cost of those assets can be verified through supplier quotations and market data. Obviously, they are saying that we will spend 15 million. So we need to confirm that on what this 15 million will be spent. Okay. Please tell me some points also. I make you people are not giving me some good points. Okay. Review past customer data. Review past customer data to confirm the collection assumptions of Flink company. Okay. You need to review the past customer data. Current data aging analysis. Current data aging analysis needs to be evaluated that whether customers pay in assumed time or not. Believe me, these are very simple line marks. Very simple. Okay, what else you can do? You can confirm the opening cash balance of the forecast. If you look at the forecast, the opening cash balance, you can confirm the opening cash balance of the forecast. The opening cash balance is 50 million or 50,000. Now, this opening cash balance can be verified from their cash book or the bank statement. Confirm opening cash balance of the forecast from cash book and bank statement as it is the actual position at start of forecast period. So you can confirm the opening cash balance. Are you people getting it? You can uh, ask the management to give the basis 
of their assertion 17% growth. Okay, so how many procedures being done? Competence and expertise of the preparer, accounting policy recalculate. Three procedures, then loan agreement, fourth one, fifth one was on CapEx, sixth one was on customer pass data, then seventh was on opening cash balance. Two more procedures. Two more procedures. What can be two more procedures? Look at the forecast and you will just start getting them. You can take the breakup of the operating expenses so that you can get the fixed element and the variable element that what is the fixed cost in the operating cost and what is the variable cost in the operating cost because the variable cost should be increasing in line with the increase in revenue. Get the breakup of the operating expenses. You can compare the breakup of operating expenses with the previous year to verify the completeness. Okay. What else you can do? He said that we will increase the output of our existing production facilities by 10%. So you will take the data of the production facilities that whether the production facilities have 10% spare capacity. He said that the processing plant will start production by 31st March 2006. So you will take the vendor's report that whether the production plant will be able to start the production by the given date. Okay. Review breakup of operating expenses and compare it with existing data to verify that all elements have been included. Further, further breakup of fixed and variable elements also need to be considered as variable elements should rise with increase in sales. Yes, you can write a procedure on tax also that we will review the tax laws of that country that whether there is a tax exemption or not. Okay. Review production report of existing production capacities to confirm that they have that they have sufficient spare capacity to increase their production by 10 percent then you can also ask the management about their assumption behind economies of scale their assumption behind growth in sales there can be many procedures but since he asked only nine so one two three four five six seven eight and nine okay are you people getting it so we have completed this part also this question also complete question of 25 marks believe me it was so easy first of all they were evaluate the matters to be considered while considering to accept clean company okay then we discussed the assumptions of the management and completeness of the forecast and then we discussed the procedures okay you can write audit procedures also, but normally in forecast engagement, we perform the review procedures, not very detailed procedures. Like you will say that I'll go and get the creditor confirmations and debtor confirmations that are normally not used. We use the review procedures. I hope that you people are understanding it. So today we completed this question number two. We completed this question number two and uh, we completed the question number one which we started in the previous class okay so this is the entire answer um again at the end i would say that uh, if anyone needs any document or wants to be added in the whatsapp group this is my number you people can uh, ask send me drop me a message on my whatsapp i will send you a link okay um Obviously, some students have sent me a message and maybe I haven't replied then normally it takes me one day to reply because I have lots of message to response. 
so uh, wait for a day at least okay for tomorrow we will complete the question number three of this paper and then we will start one more paper so all of these entire four days we will focus on practicing we will focus on dealing with complete papers as the primary objective of these sessions is practice to pass which is obviously the real objective okay so we'll continue tomorrow thank you everyone bye bye